What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about five little details that you can model that make your SketchUp models look a lot better. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so these are all designed to be little detail pieces that make your models look even more realistic. And so um, I wouldn't re necessarily recommend them for like early schematic type stuff, but as you get into like your final details and things, these can kind of make your models kind of pop and go to the next level. And so the first thing that you can add is you can include trim around your windows and doors. And so usually something this is more for like final presentations, but it really kind of gives a better idea of the way this space is going to be. And in general, I recommend that you kind of group all of your pieces of trim. That way you can get in here and you can easily apply things like different materials and things like that. And while you're working on trim, one of the things that can actually make your trim look a lot better and give a better idea of the way it's gonna feel in a space is if you click into the group that you've created and you split out the faces, and you rotate the grain of the wood. So um, this is more for like close-ups and things like that, but if I go in here and I use the position texture tool, right click and I rotate the material that's on this face 90 degrees, not only does this fit a little bit better with the way that the wood grain is actually gonna work in real life, you can also kind of see where the trim pieces come together and how they come together just by splitting these out with a simple line like this. And if you had like a different size piece of trim on the top or something like that, you could model that out as well. But trim can really make your model look a lot more detailed and a lot more complete. And if you're looking for something to help you get started with SketchUp, the beginner modeling workout pack is made for you. It walks you through five bite-sized step-by-step projects to help you build real SketchUp skills from navigation and grouping to arrays, opening, and even building a full floor plan that you can take to layout. But heads up, this is only available as a standalone product through the end of this weekend. After that, it'll no longer be available as a standalone product, only as an add-on bonus to people that purchase my main course. So if you've been meaning to sharpen your skills the right way, now's the time. All right, so this next one might be a little bit silly and it might just be me, or this might also bother you. But when I see roofs, and basically what they are is they're just a extruded shape like this one and they've got shingle material applied to them it bothers me a little bit just looking at the front and seeing this complete lack of detail over here and so one of the things i've been liking lately is just taking this front piece right here and just offsetting it down maybe like a half inch like this, and then applying that roof material to it. So then it looks like you've actually got a little bit of thickness of shingle on the top here. Now, the other thing that I like when possible, because roofs are one of those things that really kind of like mess up the immersion of the 3D for me, is anytime, anytime you can get the actual detail of the way that roof is gonna be constructed in here, I think that's a good idea, right? So this one, for example, shows the actual soffit um, under the fascia right here like this. Um, and then for this model, which is one I downloaded from the 3D house which looks really good but what i might do is just offset this down just a little bit um, just enough that i can apply that kind of like darker surface to the face like this when i do that it actually looks like you have a layer of shingles on the roof so this is obviously very much like a preference thing but when you get kind of your close-ups in here if you can actually model out roof detail in any way it's just going to add the realism the way your model is going to look rather than you just have having this kind of like boring flat shape with nothing going on in here like this. And while we're here, and this is especially relevant if you're using SketchUp 2025, while we're here, um, using custom textures from another location is a good idea because if we look at the materials that are currently included in the library we've got like one shingle material that looks like it's a whole bunch of worn shingles maybe two if we count this other one which is more of a more of a tile roof type thing and it doesn't really match with what a lot of people are actually building in the real world so you have two options for getting custom materials you can either go into the 3D warehouse. So if you click on launch 3D warehouse right here, you can go find additional materials that are downloadable. So like for example, there's a roofing collection. I'm still not a massive fan of any of the materials that are in this library, but you can click on um, this button right here in order to download that material into your library and then apply it if you decide that you wanna do that. But um, I would say using either a tool like Architectures or going to a website like 3dassets.one. So Architectures is an extension you can open up inside of SketchUp itself and it has a ton of materials that you can access. So you can just pick by type and it actually doesn't have a roofing section. So we would just search for 
shingles right here. And there's a bunch of different options that are going to look a lot better. So this, this first one, for example, you could just bring this in. You could apply it like this. And notice how that's just a way better material for what we're doing. Okay, and so the next tip that can really increase the realism of your models, I see this a lot with beginners, is actually making sure that your floors and your materials are sized to real world dimensions, right? So when you put a floor down like this, your planks are actually going to be like an actual size. Well, in this case, this texture is just really small. And so it's tiling a lot. You don't really see the detail of the floor and it doesn't really look that realistic. So to fix this, what I usually do is I'll start by drawing a line that's going to be whatever I actually want this to be. So in this case, this might be a two and a quarter inch board or something like that. You want to make sure that you're drawing it on axis when you do this. But now if I double click in here and right click and I go to position texture, what I can do is I can use the pins in here in order to resize the texture. So I want to set a base corner. So I'm just going to move my mouse in here and pick the corner right here. But then I want to take this scale pin and put it over here like this. So I want to find the end of that plank, which is going to be about here. Well, then I can just click and drag this along the blue direction until it's the same length as this edge right here, like this. So now if I hit the inner key and I zoom back out, notice how that floor is a lot larger and the planks are actually kind of a real world size, which is gonna make the whole thing look a lot more realistic. So anytime you're bringing in a custom material like this, make sure you're sizing it to its real world dimension. Okay, and so while we're here, let's talk a little bit about cabinets. Really two things about this. I mean, first off, the gap between your cabinet doors, and we'll go take a look at one where I've actually modeled this, is actually an architectural element. Like it's something that actually is affected by the way that your model looks, right? So like, for example, if I've got these doors in here, I've got kind of a face frame around the outside. Well, this gap is modeled to be whatever that is. I think it's like an eighth of an inch on this one, but it's actually modeled to represent what's in the real world. So not only does this look better and look more realistic, but it also reflects the style of the cabinets that you're putting into your model. So I really recommend you modeling with this gap in here. And one of the areas where this can be a big deal is say that you are also trying to render. And I'll just pull up Lumion View um, just to give you kind of a fast look at this. Notice how if you don't have a gap in here, then your renderer, if you actually render the space, won't actually render a gap. And so it looks like your cabinet door is just kind of this one uninterrupted thing. But if you go over here and you look at these, right, you can actually see the gaps in your cabinets and your cabinets, whoops, are significantly more realistic. So modeling cabinet gaps so that you actually have cabinets that look like they would in the real world can be a massive massive increase in the quality of your models. And then finally, one other thing you can do to take your windows to the next level is instead of modeling something like this, unless this is the actual style of window that you're putting into your model, um, instead of modeling something that just has like a frame and then a piece of glass on the inside, be more realistic with the kind of windows that you add in here. So this, for example, is a flex tools window. This is just a dynamic component that you can place inside of the wall, but when you place it inside of the wall, it's a lot more detailed in the way that the uh, sliders are in here and the way that the jams are in here and the sill and it gives you a little bit of a recess in the wall right here and this window looks significantly more realistic than this one right here if you don't want to go with paid dynamic components there's a bunch of uh, dynamic components inside of the uh, SketchUp 3d warehouse that you can download as well so I think this one is uh, from Pella Windows, but Marvin Windows has a good collection. And notice how this is actually built the way that a window would be built. And it does have options where you can right click and go to the dynamic component options and set things like the widths and the heights like this. So, um, but notice how this gives you just a significantly higher amount of realism in your model. So that doesn't mean you have to model out this level of detail yourself, but um, you can use dynamic components or if you do model out, um, make sure that you're modeling out things like the mullions that are on the inside and things like that, um, if that's even the proper word for this. Um, but make sure that you're modeling out some of that detail so that you really kind of take that window detail to the next level. Plus that little recess around the outside makes this look a lot more like it would look in the real world. If you do want to start practicing modeling 
into this level of detail, make sure that you check out the SketchUp Beginner Modeling Workout Pack that is going to be on sale through the end of this weekend. And then that one's going to go away. It's not usually available as a standalone product. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.